Hello Pisces, welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I'm so excited to have you here. We are going to dive right into your reading. I like to begin your readings by thanking those of you who have been with me for a while, who regularly watch my content, comment, like, share, who really interact and participate with the channel. I really do deeply appreciate each and every one of you. And those of you who decide to Today's the day you're going to comment. You know, I, I love those comments too. And I love when you let me know that. I, I really do deeply appreciate that. Something in the reading moved you to comment when you don't normally. Um, and to those of you who are new, welcome, welcome. I'm super happy to have you here. We are going to dive right in, guys. Keep in mind, this is a general reading. Take what resonates and leave the rest. Wow. You're getting on the bottom of the deck, I am the loving energy of the universe. And you're getting, I surrender to a power greater than me. And I witness the darkness and call on the light with my prayer. Thank you, universe, for guiding me to perceive this fear through the eyes of the teacher of love. Wow. Oh, guys. Um, I feel like there is a transformation taking place or maybe even possibly already a transformation that has taken place. All of this energy with the blue and the stars and the butterfly and, and even this universe looking Milky Way kind of picture, it's all very much giving me high priestess vibes. And, you know, how we perceive what is happening around us, in front of us, coming at us, you know, makes all the difference in the entire world. And one of the, well, I don't know if it's one of the, or if it's the only, actually, I haven't meditated on this thought, but I will, um, ways to transform is to change the way that you look at things, the way you perceive things, the way you perceive what's coming at you. We are really conditioned by our experiences to perceive things certain ways, but those experiences were our teachers and they were meant to come into our life and to teach us something and, you know, leave us with this gift of wisdom and enlightenment, right? And then to be completely released and let go. And so when you have this energy of the surrender with this energy of, the teacher of love, right? Um, perceiving the universe through the, the eyes of the teacher of love. You, you, you are perceiving the universe as something that is benevolent, that is a benevolent power, that is, e even when things are dark and things are hard, it provides some light, right? Beyond that, it is giving you this experience for a higher purpose. You know, in yoga, we say it isn't happening to us. It's happening for us. There's a huge difference in that. And when you really start perceiving life that way, you start asking, where's the gift? What am I supposed to, to learn? Right? And then you also start asking questions like, uh, you know, please help me to release anything that is ready to be let go. Because you almost sort of understand that you're a vessel of these experiences, yes, but they... There is something to be benefited from every experience even the, the really super difficult ones. And there is even something to be benefited through the transformation that takes place when we actually honestly surrender it. When I say surrender it, I'm not saying forget it happened. I'm not saying, you know, um, open yourself up just to, to it happening again. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm saying we surrender the burden of it. It wasn't ever our burden to begin with. It only becomes our burden when we take it on, when we choose to give our power to it, 
instead of holding on to our own power. Like, I don't know if you guys have seen the rape trial of, excuse, you know, like, I hope there are no kids in the room, but if there are, this might be a good time to pause the video and find some earbuds. Um, you know, her husband was drugging her and letting all these people come in and do terrible things to her while she was completely unconscious for a decade. And she is, you know, instead of being someone who is like, let me hide my identity, you know, use Jane Doe as my name. And I am not in any way judging anyone that's ever done that. Like, mm -mm, no, there's no judgment here for any reason at all. Um, but especially not that. But she said, I'm not holding the burden. This isn't my shame. I'm, I'm coming out here with my held, head held high. I did nothing wrong. I had no idea this was happening. You know, this is my husband's shame. This is these men's shame. And it is changing the narrative and it's changing the story and it's putting the onus where the onus belongs. And a lot of times in our life, you know, people transgress against us maybe, right? Those people are on our, are the holder and the bearer of that weight unless we hold it for them. But we are we don't have to hold it for them. And I'm not I'm talking about like across the board when when people do any kind of transgression against us. We don't have to hold it. We we don't it doesn't have to be our responsibility. And yes, you know, does it come with, you know, a need for us to process it, a need for us to, to come to a place of peace and acceptance with it? Yes. And is that incredibly hard? I can't even imagine being that woman. I cannot even imagine it. I cannot. I just cannot. But I'm proud of her. I pray for her and I stand with her. I don't want to get off topic here <laughs> and I, I'm like okay let me backtrack a second here where was I going with this but right but but also the process of coming to terms with it is part of our journey it's part of where we learn it's part of where we understand the deeper energies of life the deeper forces at play here and the deeper forces within us and our own limitlessness. I'm sure if you asked her, you know, five years ago, like, would you be brave enough? Would you be courageous enough to stand in front of your country and the entire world and say that this happened to you? I'm, I, 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 I don't know what she would have said, right? But in her process of coming to terms with it, in her process of understanding it, she came to this place where she has a very deep level of understanding of who owns the burden and the, of the shame and the guilt here. And it isn't her. And it never is us. It, 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 it never is the, the, <laughs> it never is. Um, and so once we come to the, those kind of depths, right? we feel this sense of connectedness to the universe. And we also know that if we have survived that, if we have lived through whatever it is, it doesn't have to be something like, I don't wanna say as horrific as that because it isn't a competition. Whatever your pain or your suffering is, it's valid and it's, it is your teacher. And it is, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm trying to say with that, but hopefully you get it. Um, I take a lot of liberties with that with you guys because you are Pisces and I hope it's okay. But there's just this energy of once we can find the gift in all the darkness, the light in the darkness, once we can come to a place of peace and acceptance, there is no barrier between us and the universe and us and the connecting, connecting to each other even on a super spiritual and deep level. 
um, because we are the universe in ecstatic motion, all of us together right now in this moment, we are all very, very, very connected. Um, and we can sort of see it from a, a different perspective. And once we have that, then we are perceiving the universe through the eyes of the teacher of love in all things, in all things, even in waking up late, even in getting stuck in traffic, even in the little things and in the big things, even in a walk in nature, our, our whole perception shifts, our whole, our whole idea of what we are experiencing it, right now. You could experience the same thing. And if you're looking through the perception of fear, everything is scary. Everything is like, oh my gosh, you know, the world's coming to an end, da 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 okay? If you are looking through the eyes of love, you are seeing the miracles and you are calm and you are at peace and you know that if tomorrow the world ends, then that was what was meant to be. You, you are not fearing it. You are living this moment right now and you're letting the next moment take care of itself. Knowing that you have survived, you have lived, you have breathed, you have changed, you have transformed, you have become something in this life already. All right, whoa, that was like extremely deep, but it it's, you know, it's Sunday. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That kept going through my mind. I was like, man, this is like a lot of an opening line. If someone's new to the channel, what are they thinking? But I always have to try to get right back out of my head when those things happen because whatever message is coming through me, this is what I ask every single day. What message does Pisces need to hear, Spirit? Please use me as a clear vessel of your divine light and wisdom. And this is what comes through. So, you know, I... That's my purpose, you know? Okay. Yeah, man, calming the waters, peaceful self-regulation. That's what we're talking about here. Duality. You know, I, I've been talking a lot about yoga, which is interesting. I mean, yoga is a big part of my life, but um, I don't always talk about it because, you know, it doesn't resonate with everyone, I guess. Um, I think a lot of people haven't tried it though. Like, and there's a lot of different kinds of yoga. So I do believe there's a yoga for everyone, but that's your prerogative. Um, the duality here in yoga, yoga means yoke and it means yoking the duality, finding the middle ground, you know, being able to balance that shadow with that light, finding yourself on that spectrum and, you know, mindfully being aware of where you are on the spectrum right? And, uh, and that requires like checking in. It also requires moving energy, you know, where, where it's necessary to be in your highest and best state, right? And with this duality and this achievement, and it says effort plus intention here, this is, you know, consciously and mindfully choosing the kind of life that you want to live, not just letting life happen to you. Not just saying, oh, this is what the universe is serving up today. Remember, I, I told you guys about the neurologist who um, he, you know, wakes up every day and is like, wow, you know, I'm so excited about today. You know, today is going to be a great day. And then he ends every day remembering all of the really amazing things that happened hour by hour in his day. And when you live your life like that, guess what you're looking for in your day? You're not looking for all the ways it's going wrong. You're looking for all the ways it's going right. And when you do that, you shift. You shift into a different energy. And then it's like things that are going wrong are not in resonance with you. And they can't, they're not, they, they can't catch you. They can't be with you. They're, they're not in resonance with you. It's not an energetic match for you. And you observe it and you're aware of it. You know, when this happens to me, I say a little prayer. You know, when someone gets yucky, you know, over, especially over something small or whatever, when I'm out, 
I, I do. I say a little prayer for them. I send them white light. I, I, I accept that I have no idea what may be going on in their life or in their mind or in their heart to put that, that, the, to put them in that energy or to have them in that energy. But I also accept that it's just not in resonance with me and I'm not taking it on, you know? Um, and as we do this, as we are able to sort of only hold our own stuff, and only worry about our own vibration and our own kind of our own self. And yoga really trains you to do that too. It's really about what's happening on your mat. Where were you yesterday and where are you today? And are you putting intention in your practice? Are you, you know, making the effort to show up every day? Yoga taught me discipline. There's no way in the world before I got yoga that I would be a tarot card reader showing up every day for my collective as best I can. Um, because you understand that even when it, you don't know why you're doing it, even when it doesn't make sense, even when you're tired, even when you're sick, even when your back hurts, even no matter what, um, any effort that you put toward it, any way in which you show a greater commitment to it and open yourself up to whatever it is in that day, in that space, in that way, um, you're better off, you're better off for it. And so, you know, there's this white buffalo in this card. And I, you know, that there was a white buffalo born, I think, in Yellowstone or like out west this year. And it's a very symbolic Native American. Um, I, I don't know why harbinger is the only word I'm thinking of, but it's not that. Um, I mean, a harbinger is a sign of things to come, right? So in a, in a way it is that, but like it, no, I'm talking about like symbol or sign or prophecy or something like that, um, that the, that things are changing. The world is changing. Like this is a very, very, very big deal. It's a very coveted sign. It's something that really very rarely happens. And it happened, I think it was this year. And when you... <laughs> When you make these daily efforts and these daily commitments, like I can't tell you how much I have grown having this channel and showing up every day and interacting with you guys and having this connection with you guys every day. It surprises you the ways in which it changes you. Um, you know, reading tarot cards helps you to see life from a zoomed out perspective, which is a much easier way to look at life um, then the zoomed in kind of way. It lets you sort of let go of the reins of needing to control things, understanding that there are, there are things that we can gain insight to and we can change and transform. And there are things that are going to happen regardless of what we do. And we can learn from them. We can grow from them. We can allow them to change and transform us instead of trying not to change and trying to hold on to what was. Our world will never be the same. What happens outside of us will never be the same as, as the way it was like when I was a kid, you know what I mean? Or when my grandma was a kid or, you know, we, we can't, that world is gone. It's lost. Like the internet was invented, like it's done, you know? And so we're always trying to like get back there or hold on to these things. And it's beautiful to hold on to, to tradition. I was just looking at my Christmas tree and, you know, getting out my cookie recipes, which have been handed down to me for, for, for many generations, and thinking how beautiful the traditions are. But traditions have their place. They're not the sum total of our experience, right? Um, and I'm not saying, like, just let things go to hell. Like, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that, you know, understanding that change is a constant and a given and a promise of life. Um, and, you know, opening our heart to what it holds, the promise that it holds, the opportunity that it holds, instead of saying, oh my gosh, things can't change. You know, I've got to hold on to this way of being with everything that I am because, you know, it, it can only be bad. Well, no, you know, the internet has also opened up, you know, people that didn't have voices to have a voice, people that couldn't get information to be able to get information. People can learn anything. People can grow in any way. But it's like with anything, it has a duality. Um, and that's just an example, right? 
them. So when we become at peace with what has happened and where we have come from and what our past is, and we become at peace with, you know, just this deep inner knowing that we are far more capable than we realize and that everything, every change that comes into our life, everything that stretches us, every suffering, every everything, it, it is really just helping us to become. It is really just <laughs> a loving teacher. Now, you guys, I grabbed this deck, which I never use on its own. I have never used it on its own. It's even called Clarifying Life Situations. So it's not even like it's a clarifying deck. But I literally got it to use it by itself today. So I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. But here we go. Okay. I feel this sense of right now, there's just an extreme need to be at peace and to be calm. Um, you know, you have this energy of meadow of moments, bask in the meadow of moments where presence blossoms in the simplicity of now. Yeah, I don't know. You know, Pisces, it, it can be right now that things may feel a bit overwhelming. You guys are empaths and the world is crying. You know, the world is hard. Um, but yeah, like... We have, to, we have to know the difference between the things we can do something about and the things that we can't. And we have to understand how we can make the greatest difference, how we can be the change that we wish to see in the world, how we can go within and strengthen ourselves and do the work on ourselves and only worry about ourselves. And if every single human being does that, my God, you know, we will rise above any, any um, intruder or <laughs> what, I don't know. I, guys, words are very weird for me today right now. Um, and so we, we make peace with our past. We introspect. We make peace with our past. And we make peace with, you know, that we will survive. That we will persevere. And that we are way braver and way stronger and way more equipped than we know. And I think, too, right now is I have been called a lot in my meditations to trust what I do not see, to trust that I do not see everything, to trust that just as a, like as a soul, you know, as, as a spiritual being having a human experience, you, you can only, this is 10% right here. You can touch this, you can affect this, you can hurt this, you can damage this, right? It, 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 it's vulnerable to those things. But 90% of me, you can't see or touch. You can't affect it unless I let you. You can't affect it. And the uni we are the universe in ecstatic motion. The universe is exactly like us. 10% of the universe is what we're dealing with in this material world. There is 90% of it that is happening that we, you know, even when I am as tapped in as I can possibly be in utilizing every clear sense that I can get myself in, in alignment with to use, I'm still not touching, <laughs> but, but, but a very small percent of what is unseen out there. And so there is a bigger picture and there are things that are happening that are beyond what we can see. And so if we get bogged down in the I can see this, it becomes impossible for us to be at peace with it. It becomes impossible for us to be at peace in our own self. And so there is a level of trusting, trusting in our own ability to persevere and our own limitlessness and trusting in the universe at large and the things that we cannot see, you know, just having belief, right? Um, you have peaks reached. You know, my grandma lived through the Great Depression, and my grandma was like a freaking amazing storyteller. I, she really actually wanted to be an author. Her and her sister used to stay up all night and tell stories and write books, and like they lived on a farm. There was no electricity, there was no television, there was no nothing. And um, that they looked forward to going to bed so that they, the two of them could like, you know, share these stories. And so my grandma was just like this incredible, she could take you there. And when you would go to see her, she would be like, sit down at my table. And she'd pour you a Coke and make you a sandwich and some soup. And like sit there and just tell you stories about like living on the farm and all these things. 
and how, you know, there were times during the Great Depression where, you know, that it felt like the end of the world. There was so much suffering, so much, um, you know, lack, so much scarcity, so much, you know, all of this. And my grandma, like, and that generation, like her brothers and sister, her brother and her sisters, and my, on my other side, I was really close with my grandparents and my great aunts. And like, you know, my, my great uncle, like was there when MacArthur came ashore, you know, he was the person that went ahead and found the mines. Um, he had like a bronze star and a purple heart and, you know, like they, it, it, like they lived in a way in which, you know, the, the level of fragility, you know, the level of, you know, a bad crop season, they didn't know if they were going to survive, you know, um, a, a mine in the wrong place or not being fully focused or not paying full attention, um, or just, you know, unfortunate timing or, or whatever. Um, and you know, my great uncle would have bit it, you know, and he came close a few times, which is why he was so highly decorated. But like, you know, our life is so much like compared to theirs. Our life is so cushy, you know? I mean, we have air conditioning. Like my grandma would always like talk about how now she has a refrigerator. Now we have air conditioning. Now we have an electric stove. Like, you know, that was a big deal to her. And so there are so many things that we take for granted. There are so many things that we forget, you know, uh, you know, I don't know, that make our life so much easier. And when I see this peaks reached, it says, celebrate your achievement and savor the triumph of your ascent for you've climbed high and earned our, your view. Um, you know, there is this energy of, you know, within ourselves, in our own lives, we, we didn't start out with all these understandings. We didn't start out you know, being able to plug into the universe or even being able to like talk about or even understand these things that we're talking about here today. We've all evolved. We've all grown. And, you know, it has gotten easier, hopefully, in a lot of ways to be us with our spiritual growth, right? When, when, when life is happening to us and we're not in control of it, we're riding the outside of the wheel of fortune and we are experiencing every up and down. And that is a very, very, very tumultuous, unstable, unsettling, disorienting way to live. It's hard. It feels like a roller coaster constantly, right? When, as we become more spiritual and as we become more in touch with all of these things that we're talking about here today, we move towards the center of the wheel. And when you're in the center of the wheel, the world is still going on. All of those things are still happening, but you're here. You you know, you're you're balanced, you're grounded, you're centered, you're you're not disoriented, you're not feeling unbalanced, you're not feeling shaken up by it. You are trusting in yourself and in the universe and in your ability to persevere. And in the faded nature of things, you know, um, and you have this inner vision, which is, you know, very high priestessy, so much intuitive energy flowing in this reading today, cut through the fog of confusion with your power of discernment. Yeah, this is like, you know, understanding what feels good and what feels bad. And saying, you know, if that feels bad, I'm moving away from it. I'm choosing something else. We we have the power of that choice. We have the power of, of choosing how we perceive things, how we think about things, how we interact with things. And then you have soul whispers. Look beyond the words and hear what is really being said now. This is like, hey, yeah, 10% of us can be seen and touched and can be affected and is vulnerable and is mortal. But even if you kill this body, my soul, my spirit will go on. That is what I believe. And so you can't touch that, you know, not unless I let you, not unless I give you that power, not unless I consent to it. The universe is the same way. You have the seed of potential. We are on the brink of some kind of new beginning. I have had so many prophetic dreams. I, I don't even want to say what they all are, but 
I have actually never been so full of hope as I am right now. And I think it sounds crazy. And I think me about like two, three weeks ago would have been like, uh, <laughs> you're crazy. <laughs> but nope, I know what I know. And I trust what I trust. And I am full of hope. And that's what this card is saying to me. It says, yeah, plant the seed of potential and nurture it sprouting. Promise with your attention and care. Plant the seeds you believe in. Plant the things that you hope for. You know, be be the cultivator of the world that you want to see. It begins with us, each and every one of us. All right, I don't know what is happening here, Pisces, but I love you guys. And if you're still with me, thanks for hanging out. I don't know. These are the messages. To stay calm, that's what I'm getting. Be at peace. I don't know. I feel something's going to happen soon. All right, here we go. But I, I feel at peace. I do not feel we need to be worried or, or, or in fear. I mean, we never do need to worry or be in fear. Fear is not going to help us even, even no matter what. All right, guys. Let me reshuffle this. Somehow my cards were not all facing the same direction. All right. Four Pisces. Gosh, you guys, the lovers was on the bottom of the deck. And you see how, you know, there is attention and care. This is really listening to each other. This is really like, okay, yeah, I don't know. All right, let's, here we go. For Pisces, okay. Oh, you guys, I'm having such trouble seeing these days. Okay, wow. Oh, right before I got on here, um, one of you who comments, uh, you know, who I feel like I know, was talking about, oh, yeah, like, this would be, you know, the opportune time or whatever to go be the hermit. He's working, like, double overtime. Anyway, I just read that before I got on here, and now I see this, and it just, I don't know, those things always feel like confirmations. But again, you guys, the first thing that I'm seeing is 789, progress. Um, and you know, progress a lot of times is ugly. Progress a lot of times looks like a backslide before it, before we go, oh, all of that had to happen so that we could do this. You know, the tower has to fall before we can build upon, you know, a stronger foundation. Um, and so, yeah, there is a little bit of that energy here, but like you do have the strength. Um, you have the Queen of Cups here, and it says honoring your emotions is one of the highest forms of self-care. And I am getting that really a lot here of just like really listening to yourself. Does this make me feel better or worse? You know, um, like an example of that is like, you know, people who watch the news a lot. Do you feel better watching the news or do you feel worse when you watch the news? Like, listen to those things. I'm not telling you there's a right answer or a wrong answer here. I'm just saying that like, be mindful, you know, hear what your body is telling you, hear what your intuition is telling you. You have the two of wands and it says your decisions decide your future here, nothing else. Yeah, this is, you, you are always in control. You know, a, a lot of times we will give our power to the world at large or we will say, oh my God, if this happens, it's all over, da, 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 da. Okay, well, where's that getting you? Where's that thought getting you? I don't know why we're going so deep into this so much right here, but like, I don't know. Um, you know, I trust the universe. I trust the messages that I get. To a certain extent, the, the future is going to happen the way the future is going to happen. The best thing that we can do to ourselves is be in our highest and best energy for whatever comes. For the moment that we are in right now and for whatever comes. Um, and that two of wands is symbolic of, yeah, we're at a crossroads. You know, <laughs> there's the past and there's the future and we're kind of standing in between it right now. How we look at it, how we perceive it, how we perceive our place and our role in it is up to us it is a choice that we make individually for ourselves and i'm not saying you know ignore all of these things or whatever but ask yourself is there something i can do to change it besides changing myself focusing on myself be contributing the best highest most beautiful light i can from myself 
you know? And you have the Seven of Pentacles. There's something about divine timing here. This is something about, you know, plant the seeds. Plant the seeds of hope. Plant the seeds of that that of the things that you really want to see grow and that you really want in your life. You know, don't be distracted by things happening outside of you. Stay focused on what you yourself are trying to have in your own life and trying to build in your own life. With the hermit, Guys, I am really getting like unplug. Take a moment to unplug. You have to take care of yourselves. You have to. I'm just getting this so strongly of just like, you have to have a moment to think about what what your wish fulfillment is, what you're hoping for, what your best life looks like to, to, to just almost sort of meditate on it or to be one with it or to be at peace with it or to be focused on it. Um, and it, it, I, I am getting a bit of the sense of like, you know, my, my son, um, he works full time and goes to college full time. And he had a really, really, really big work week. A lot was happening. And he he's in management. And so he, um, and he's, he's only 22. He's like young. And a lot of times everyone else will bail. And he'll be the one that's there that like has to kind of like make it happen. Has to bring it home, you know, kind of a thing. And he's always had that role. He's always had that role. He was a pitcher in baseball and it was like, it would always come down to the last minute. They would, he was a closer, a, pit, a closing pitcher and he would have to come out and just be uh, nerves of ice. I mean, it is a special talent that he has, but he ended up getting really sick because he worked so many days in a row, so many hours and he had like, people were calling out and he had to go in and I mean, it was just, it was like a nightmare. And I knew he was getting sick and I was like door dashing him food and, you know, like trying to mom him as best I can from two hours away. But, um, he, he ended up just getting really, really, really sick. And this, it's like, you know, my husband and I called him and we were like, listen, you know, your company does not care if you are healthy or if you're sick. They do not care if you're, you know, you have to care for yourself and you have to know what your boundaries are and you have to say, I'm sorry, I'm not coming in today. I'm sorry that you called out. Like, you're going to have to find someone else. Like, you know, we're extremely proud that you have this integrity and that you have this work ethic. But like, also, you cannot put your work ethic above your health. You know, you cannot put your integrity above, you know, your health and they will figure it out, you know, and it, other people will have to step up if you don't, you know, and he worked for another company before this and they're trying to get him back. And, you know, because it's hard to find people like that, you know, and we're like, listen, but you got to take care of yourself. And I'm getting that with the hermit. It's like you really have to listen to what you need and you have to remember nobody else is really looking out for you besides you. You have to be the one to, you know, realize, keep things in perspective and prioritize things for yourself. And only you can make that decision for yourself. But with the hermit here, it's saying, you know, you are important. Your spiritual well-being, your health, your your ability to, you know, create what you're trying to create, plant the seeds that you want to plant. The Seven of Pentacles and the Seeds of Hope, that those are both really the same energy. Your your strength, your ability to get through what is happening, what, what is to come, the, even the unexpected things that will inevitably come is your top priority. It's your concern. It, it's your, 
I don't know. You got to tame that beast within you that's like... I don't know. Take it as it resonates, Pisces. Only you know what's best for you. Okay. Whoa. How, wow. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my gosh. This 789 thing is cuckoo bananas right here. But the Empress is coming out here. And this is what I'm saying. I'm getting this energy of it you know you need the time and the energy like to manifest to be your most limitless self to keep things in perspective and to kind of maintain your highest and best energy here and it's like when you are choosing love and you are choosing to Prioritize your own well-being. That's the decision of the Empress. That, that you know, the Empress is, is not... The Empress... The Empress energy comes from knowing your worth and knowing your value. And, you know, believing in it and committing to it wholeheartedly. You have the Hermit energy here clarified by strength once again, and then you have the Seven of Cups on the bottom of the deck. The Seven of Cups represents fear and illusion. It also represents a lot of, of cups, of a lot of like, oh my gosh, well, it, you know, you can't drop the ball here. You can't drop the ball here. You know, it's sort of a mess. It's something that needs to be prioritized. It's, some, it, it's like we can't just look at everything out in front of us and give it the same priority or the same, you know, sort of value. You know, we, we have to, we have to have a hierarchy in our lives because then it makes making decisions a hell of a lot easier because we're like, well, am I taking care of priority one, two, and three? Okay. If those are taken care of, then a priority four comes along. Okay. I can do that. If I haven't taken care of priority one, two, and three, I better not be saying yes to a priority four. You know, it, it's, it's keeping things organized and you know, there will always be, my husband's making fun of me because I started, I, I like Christmas shop for a while because I like to get like the perfect things for my kids. And, um, and so anyway, he's like, you know, you, you have this list of what you're going to buy them. And he was like, and then you buy that. And then it's like, something comes up and you're like, oh, but that's such a good idea. But that's such a great thing. And he's like, you, it has to stop somewhere. You have to say, okay, enough is enough. I'm really happy with what I got. I'm done, you know, at some point, you know, and you know, he's right. Um, and it's kind of like that. It's like, there's always going to be some emergency or some fire to put out or some friend who, who, who needs us when we're, we're beat tired and we've done all we can do with the day. And we're going to be like, oh, I should get back up. I should deal with this. I should go help them. I should, you know or whatever it when you hear should right a lot coming out of your mouth and in your mind should 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 you should do this you should do that just remember this it's not kind to should on yourself my my yoga teacher says that all the time and it's not kind to should on anyone but it's also not kind to should on yourself and i hate the word should and once you really bring your mindful awareness to what should really means and what it what it actually does, it's, you know, you'll never hear it the same way again, you know? Um, but anyway, I'm going to leave that there. I don't know what this is, Pisces, but apparently you really need to take care of yourself. I actually think you have something really big coming or, or there are many big things coming or many big things happening. You may even have a lot of opportunities. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, with the Seven of Cups uh, coming out again, you definitely have a lot of opportunities and it, and it could be hard to say, um, you know, like it could be, it, it could just feel like, oh my gosh, there's all these priorities coming at me. I need to like do as many of them as I can. 
And it's kind of like, no, it, this is telling me, especially with the Seven of Cups sandwiched in between the Eight of Pentacles and the Knight of Pentacles, this energy of the Eight of Pentacles and the Knight of Pentacles is, you know, remember what you're working on. You're mastering yourself, right? And so a lot of, there at least three of the Cups and the Seven of Cups are actually going to take you away from what you're actually working on or what really matters to you, you know? And we got to be careful about that because it's really easy for us to like prioritize other people. It's really easy for us to, you know, to say, oh, but that's shiny and it looks really cool. And like, I wasn't thinking about doing that, but like, man, it kind of seems like a good idea. I'm going to go in that direction, you know? And then it's like, there's, that may open up a couple other directions. And so we have to remember that like our goal here or like what we're trying to accomplish is this mastery of self is creating this world that we really want to live in. And if something isn't super in alignment with that, you know, even if it feels like, man, that's prestigious or man, that's a really good idea or man, that's this or man, that's that, um, you know, we have to remember like what our priorities are, what we're working on or what we're trying to master in our own life for ourselves, what we're creating ourselves for ourselves. And with the Knight of Pentacles, it's okay to go slow. You, the thing is you want to take meaningful steps. You want to make sure that every step you're taking, every time you put one foot in front of the other, it's in the right direction. Because then there's a lot of wasted energy and you're going around in circles and you're like, oh yeah, this, oh yeah, that. So I don't know what's coming here, but Pisces, it does seem like there's a lot of opportunity coming in for you. And it's really important for you to sort of like know who you are, know what you're about, know what you're working on. Because there, you, you know, there's this energy of you only have so much energy. Energy is a currency, right? And you only have so much. And, you know, when things get really exciting and there's all these opportunities, it's like we we have a tendency to just deplete ourselves completely and to kind of end up in this space where it's like, we don't have anything left to give to anything. Not the things that we want to prioritize, not the things that just seem like exciting opportunities coming our way, not anything. We're just depleted. We have nothing left to give. And with the Four of Swords, it's like we have to take ourselves out and we got to heal. You know, it's, it's like my son, you know, that's exactly what he did to himself. He completely ran himself down. And, you know, then he had to call out sick to work because he was sick. And he's actually never in his life called out sick to work. It was kind of a big deal. Mm, oh my God, I love this. So you have, wow, you have, oh my God, you guys, oh, I just heard, let me lead you. Let me lead you. Whoa. Three of wands coming out here on this energy. It's like, this is our planning and our strategizing for the future and making those things our priority. What kind of life do we want to live? And this, all the threes are like body, mind, and spirit, father, son, and the Holy Ghost masculine, feminine, and the divine, you know, all of these energies with these threes, it is giving me like the divine is definitely trying to lead you in a particular direction right now. And it is an exciting time and things are opening up and you are getting opportunities. And I, I'm also just getting, there's a lot of change in the world at large. Maybe, you know, a lot of change happening in your work environment, a lot of change happening in your community. Maybe there's even change happening where you live. Um, or maybe you're moving or they're just, it feels like a lot of external change. I feel it for the whole general collective, like all of us on this planet, there's a lot of change happening right now. But I also feel like in our own areas, there's, there are things that are changing and some of them we can see and some of them we can't see. And so there's sort of this energy of us needing to be really and truly stronger than ever the pillars of consciousness in our own space you know really super dedicated to our own vision for our future and for ourselves and super dedicated to our own sort of like health and well-being and with that hermit energy coming out this three of wands and this nine of wands on this five of pentacles um 
it, it there is there's definitely this energy of persevering and really really holding on the nine of wands is where we're holding on to what we desire we're not giving up on what we desire we may be taking hits we may have to say no to some things we may not then get asked back to certain things or whatever this is an energy of trusting that trusting the things that fall away and the things that come in for us that 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 if we are really true to ourselves and that we are really using that as our navigating stick it is absolutely taking us where we are meant to go um where we belong it's taking us home it's taking us toward the opportunities that are really and truly meant for us and that are really and truly in our highest and best good it's not taking us on um cat chases is what i'm getting what is that like we're going um wild goose chases i don't know i don't know what in the world um i don't think it matters the three of cups is on the bottom of the deck and this is like our celebration our this is taking us to our soul tribe this is taking us to our our, our people this is taking us to better and happier times um no matter what is happening outside no matter what is happening around us it is fortifying us it is strengthening us a lot of threes here and i'm getting this let me lead you energy so follow the signs follow the synchronicities listen to your dreams listen to your your inner guidance system here i feel like it's a lot of high priestess energy here i feel like you know definitely find time to tap into your intuition Yeah. Oh my God. Woo. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yes. So many threes, you guys. Two more threes coming up right here. So you've got four threes right here. Three is a significant number that may be a sign or a synchronicity. And hey, I'm telling you, someone's saying, let me lead you. Watch the signs and synchronicities. If you get angel numbers or you keep seeing the same number repeatedly, Google angel number and then that number, whatever it is. It doesn't even have to be repeating numbers. Like if it's 718, you know, and you just keep seeing it, like there's an area code, there's my total at CVS, there's my this, there's my that. Look it up. Look it up. You have the Three of Wands with the Three of Swords. The Three of Wands is an energy of planning and strategizing. It's an energy of what do we hold near? What do we want to be loyal to? You know, what lights our fire? You know, there's a lot of symbology in this card. Um, and then you have the Three of Swords. And this is, you know, this is a little bit like, well, I'm afraid if I don't do this, then... Why is, why are books coming up in all your readings? Do you see this is at the library? I've never seen a three of swords at a library. And then she's holding this book. Um, and also, I literally just saw, like, if the worst happens, meet me at the library. They don't know where it is. I literally just saw that on Instagram. So I don't know what that means. But like, also, um, maybe it is about kind of making light of the heavy situations so that they're not so scary or like looking for a, an alternate way to handle the fear or even just recognizing it and letting it be your teacher, the fear, the suffering energy. Letting it be your teacher rather than your decision maker. Guys, you got judgment with the Eight of Wands. And then you have this gorgeous world card over here. Oh my God. And underneath the world is the Fool. The last card in the tarot and the first card in the tarot. The zero energy where everything is brand new. This is what I'm getting. This is the exact energy I keep getting in my meditations. Everything has to fall apart before 
the dawn, the day dawns again. You know what I mean? It, it's not over. It's clearing the way for something new. Um, we're all, I feel like, completing cycles in our life or even just as a collective in the world. It's crazy. But um, with judgment and the eight of wands, judgment is this major arcana. And this is like, it says, all the signs say that you're exactly where you're supposed to be. That is, it's, it's a trust. It's a trust that if you're making decisions that are in, in alignment with, I've actually been saying this mantra repeatedly. Um, I am in alignment with my highest and best. I am in alignment with my highest and best. I've been saying that repeatedly lately. I don't know. Those words came to me when I was cooking dinner the other day and I've just been saying them all, all like all the time. Every time I have that inclination to say a mantra, I say that. So there is something here about just kind of trusting even the things that you cannot see and trusting that you cannot see everything and not getting too bogged down in what you can see. Um, and you have this eight of wands, which is like moving forward without obstacle. This is like victory and success and it's a very fast moving energy. Your perception of everything that is happening in your world and in the world is your greatest navigation tool at this time. Maybe always it is. I don't know. I have to meditate on it. But if you're really living for your truth and for the kind of world you want and the kind of life that you want, you I feel like you're going to get in the flow and in the fast track of it. And... I don't think there's anything stopping you. And I feel like this is like kind of the last part of some kind of cycle closing, some kind of new cycle beginning. It's understanding the power you have to steer your ship towards love. With hope, with optimism mindfully <laughs> Pisces You got the devil and the world card coming out over here on this three of swords and this three of wands. Big duck. Oh my god. Oh my god. The tarot. You guys, I just. Ah. I don't know, but I know that this is the message I'm meant to put out today. So I, 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 I hope that it brings peace and clarity. Um, yeah, so this is like, sometimes the world really wants us to believe that, you know, we are powerless. Bubba, <laughs> like Bhakti here, Bubby. Um, that we always have to be kind of like on guard and that, you know, we, we can't really change the world or that, you know, whatever, you know, I don't know that we should always sort of be afraid or feel small or feel limited. 
but that's a bunch of bullshit. I mean, honestly, I'm just gonna let you know. We have so much power in ourselves. Um, and we have so much power in ourselves to create the kind of world we want. Um, Tit Nahaj, or I don't know, I never say his name correctly. Tit Nahan or something like that. Um, he, he wrote this book and it's called be free where you are. And it's actually, I, this is like someone that was following him and he would go to prisons and he would talk to the people, the prisoners in the prisons about how they could, um, find freedom even, even within the confines of the prison. And he spent all this time, like even talking to them about really chewing their food and like actually allowing it you, you when you are chewing food like not to be gross or anything but like your saliva is breaking it down and so it's releasing flavor and when you when you are quick just taking huge bites and swallowing it practically whole you're not getting the true experience and you're kind of just like, well, I have to eat it really fast because da 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 or blah, 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 or you know what I mean? Um, whatever. It, it's kind of the experience is owning you. But when you say, you know what? I have enough time to sit and to enjoy this and to really experience this and to, you know, um, experience it in its highest and best and to chew this as long as I want to chew it as long as it's improving the the experience of it. And when you start being that mindful and you start realizing how many things in your life really are in your control and how sophisticated you really are as a spiritual being having a human experience and how it really is those really small, sm seemingly small things in life that add up to really expanding our experience as humans and really enriching it. Um, you know, the world starts opening up for you in very different ways and your experience of life starts changing. You know, you have to eat regardless, right? And so you can eat and just like shove it down and like swallow your water and like move on with your day and there it is, I fueled my body. Or you can be mindful about what you're putting in your body and how it tastes and, and actually being fully present when you're eating it and experiencing it. And um, there are all these ways in which we can free ourselves from these traps or these ideas or these, it is almost like the prisons that society or culture or whatever puts on us um, by just taking our power back in small ways and in big ways. Um, And part of taking our power back, you know, I, I tell you guys, I haven't watched TV God, in probably over a decade. Um, I, I do watch occasionally something on Netflix or whatever, but like I, commercials, I, I do not want to see commercials. I, I love the state of Vermont. In the state of Vermont, they don't even have billboards. Vermont is a very special place. If you have the opportunity to go there, go there. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, and the people are fabulous. Um, but there's this energy of taking your control back, you know, from the bombardment of who we should be and what our life should look like and what a successful life should look like. And, you know, I like all of these things when you're not seeing it and you're not exposed to it guess what you don't care about it it doesn't even register on your radar you know um you're just not that into it. It, it it's not something that's important it's not something that's occupying your mind or your heart or your or anything it's just not some nagging voice in the background you know i should be this i should be that you know um, and so it's like taking your power back. And, and this is what it's telling you is you have this pain and you have this boundaries and it's saying like, if something is contributing to your suffering, 
have a boundary, hold space for yourself, prioritize yourself, you know, don't, don't, you know, be mindful of it. Um, and you have the queen of swords here, which the queen of swords is the ultimate energy of discernment of, I have suffered enough, right? I have, um, you know, I have been through the entire sword cycle. I have had all of these experiences. I have learned what there is to learn from them. And now I am wiser. And now I know that I have the opportunity to choose my experiences and what I avail myself to and what I don't avail myself to. And when I choose the things that I desire and I choose to cut out the things that cause me grief and pain and suffering, I'm making space for more of what I desire. The devil is where we're tied to something, where we're stuck in an energy, where we don't feel free to make our own choices, where we don't feel free to experience the kind of life we want to live or to carve out whatever space or time or dream or hope or whatever that we hold space for, our, that, that we imagine and dare to dream and believe is possible for ourselves. This is where it's like, well, I can't have that because that's a scarcity mindset. That is that is your stuckness in, personified, you know, in action, in motion. Man, the words that are coming out here are crazy. But Pisces, what I see is that you have a new beginning that you deeply desire, and I think it's potentially in love. And this is, you know, treating your body like a temple, treating your life like a sacred space that is worthy, that is special, that is, you know, that you are the master of. You don't want someone coming into your life and you're like, oh man, I barely have room for you because I've chosen to take on all these things or because, you know, this is distracting me or that's distracting me or, you know, I'm just not in my highest vibration because I've, I haven't put boundaries between me and the things in my life that cause my own suffering. With the, the world card coming out twice. Also, guys, I did notice that the world card is 21. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 is a very significant number for you right now, I feel. But with two world cards and two aces, there's definitely a cycle closing out. I feel like there's one in a larger outer world in your life and one in a larger inner world in your life. These things are coinciding right now for a reason. You are in charge. You get to make a lot of decisions. You get to make a lot of observations. You get to be free where you are. You get to say what you allow and what you are going to hold a boundary against for yourself. And this is on purpose. This is something that is happening now because something new is trying to come into your life. If you're dealing with a water sign, I know we're twin flames. I'm sorry I ripped the rug out from under you. If you're dealing with a fire sign. Holy crap. Um, okay. <laughs> one, 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 one. We just had that portal this month. I watch our movie and imagine you beside me and I miss hearing you say my name. Okay, if you're dealing with an earth sign, what I'd give to kiss you and you light my fire. If you're dealing with an air sign, I'm sorry I panicked and let my fears mess things up. Your voice soothes me and I'm sorry I pushed you away because I feared being abandoned. Pisces, I don't know. This message was for somebody, I feel it. Too many confirmations happening over and over and over again. Protect your heart light. Um, 
protect your ability to be open to the things that you want more of. Protect your energy and don't lose sight of the fact that you're, you're in charge. You're creating your reality. This is what I have for you guys today. I really hope it helps. I hope it brought you some peace and clarity. I love, love, love you guys. And I'm sending you off with all my very best today and always. Bye-bye.